Decorating Fidelity Counting Blessings Reinvigorating Service We want to share with you our journey as daughters of St. Paul. From the time we were founded in the Philippines 75 years ago, in April 1949, Father James Alderione and Mother Clepe Lomberto came to visit. Rejoicing over the good work done, Father Alderione told the sisters, Leave the Pauline Spirit in a Filipino color. Besides visiting homes with reading materials, the sisters started their small crude printing work. And in 1952, published the first book, Miss Filipina, a guidebook for young girls. In 1955, through the help of Archbishop Santos, the first Hindenburg letterpress printer arrived, and printing apostolate began to operate fully and published the first Filipino translation of the Bible, Ang Banal na Biblia, which was released in December 1962. The first venture in major work began in Naga in 1963, and shortly after, a small radio studio was put up in Pasay. The Philippine Foundation has been sending missionaries to foreign lands. India, Japan, Korea, Australia, Nigeria, and England. Then later to Taiwan, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, Papua New Guinea, Thailand, South Africa, and Spain. Formation and the use of the media has always been part of the Ministry of the Daughters of Singapore. This trust in media education was professionalized and systematized in the foundation of the Pauline Institute for Communications in Asia, or PICA. Another field of apostasy is the television, video, and audiovisuals. Today, TV masses are uploaded online on the YouTube Voice RTV channel, which is then accessed by Filipinos the world over, especially migrant workers. The Daughters of St. Paul from the earliest days have collaborated with the communication centers and offices of dioceses in the country. With the onset of internet in the Philippines in 1994, the Daughters of St. Paul welcomed with enthusiasm and optimism this new means of communication. The growth and development of the past 75 years would not have been possible without the partnership, support, and assistance of countless benefactors the members of the Association of the Pauline Cooperators, and the lay mission partners. To them, we give our heartfelt thanks. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago, Stu Anansi Santiago and Family, APMR Group, Royal Bread House, Quilan's Food House, Teresita Villa Abrilia, Dream Vet Group Philippines Incorporated, Dr. Alvin and Alma Garduque, T. Lino Trucking Services, Cecil Snack Inn, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Melvin Aviles, Davao LB Junk Store, Mr. Edwin Y. Kwa, Davao Bonifacio Motors Incorporated, Dasha, Consolidated Plywood Industries Incorporated, Friends of Paulines, Chardin, Nida S. T. Latches, Tatan Gigi Coronel and Children, Chino, Chian, Casey Neng and a lot, Anonymous, Ernie and Mercy Evangelista, John Paul the Second College of Davao, Attorney and Mrs. Ellie R. Britannia, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Protasio Takundo and Family, Fel Yamida and Family, Anflocor Management and Investment Company, Davao Diamond Industrial Supply, Dr. Alfredo V. Abundo, Serge Estante, Jess and Melly Deason and Family, Agustin and Sophie Zuluaga and Family, Mr. and Mrs. Renato Lorenzo, and Rudy and Jean Subiaco. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept Most Holy Trinity, 
these sacrifices fulfilled at one time by the divine word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Deb Ed Daliaon District, headed by the District Supervisor Evangeline Vicencio. Thanksgiving intentions and blessings of the 17 years of service of Vita Rivera's bookkeeping services, JV Ferriol's elementary school teachers with the principal, Mrs. Abelina Saez, Magsaysay Elementary School teachers with the principal, Leonida A. Polentinos, Santa Clara Elementary School teachers with the principal, Marites Mobi, V.S. Bango Elementary School teachers with the principal, Arman Caballero, Don Julian de la Cruz Central Elementary School with the principal, Aida Gatpulintan, Mr. and Mrs. Peter Campaco and family, Alfredo and Marites Mobi and family, Evelyn Masculino and Mayet Fergas, Ildefonso Polentinos and family, Alviso and Ramos and family, Tumuran family, Kagawad Nancy Cortez, Renato Lorenzo, Teresita Nino, and Joy and Joey Mempin. Recovery and healing of Mila Villa Abrilie, Jermin Chu, Rodolfo Estera, Manuel Sem, Lita Doromal, and Dorothy Joy Villafuerte. For the good health of Nora Quintela, for the successful operation of Rosalinda Ramiliano, for the successful board exams of Kenneth James Prasquelias, for the birthday intentions of our TV director, Sister Rica Dalagit FSP, Carmelita B. Resentes and Felicity Aguilar, and Sofia Zuluaga, for the eternal repose of Luciana Estera, Isidorico Rique Cinco de Gipil, Jesus Ceniza, Kashana and Sofia Balili, and Gerardo Quizon. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Our reaction to the outside pressure of violence depends upon our inner disposition. If we manage to ask Jesus to cleanse us from any resentment as this attacked us, then it will not be difficult to walk three miles and give our other cloak to the person who needs this. And we will be doing these acts of love with a joyful heart, knowing that Jesus has taken possession of us. Jesus tells us today in our gospel that as God's children, we have to imitate his love which does not limit itself to good people. As believers, we are not called to remain passive before evil in and injustice around us. May our Holy Mass be the source of our courage and strength. To officiate the Holy Mass is Reverend Father Albert Bernal, SSP. The choir during this Holy Mass is the Hymnos Christi Choir, St. Joseph Parish, Sasa, Davao City. Come, let us sing joyfully and celebrate the banquet of love. Please rise.
love and thanksgiving. Let us begin our celebration in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, and welcome to our celebration. As brothers and sisters, we are asked to love one another, but the challenge is we are also asked to love even our enemies. Coming together as God's children, let us ask the Lord for pardon and strength so that we could always meet His compassion and gentleness of heart. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord commanded the Israelites to love their fellow countrymen. Christian love makes no distinction between races, religions, even one's moral standing. The first reading. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart, though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen. Do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. compassion on his children so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him the Lord is kind and merciful
the Apostle Paul reminds us that the Holy Spirit dwelling in us makes us God's temple. If we are God's holy dwelling, then we ought to respect and love each other. The second reading. From the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own races. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings for everything belongs to you. Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. keeps the word of Christ. The love of God is truly perfected in him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, 
love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father for he makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not do pagans do the same? So be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's generation, it would not be easy to love anymore. A lot of people would say it's complicated, just like Facebook, complicated. Yet, what is even more complicated or say challenging, and that is what Jesus commands us in today's gospel. So in today's readings, my dear friends, it's all about love. But uh, let me journey with you on this reading with my reflection in a clear and simple manner. We just uh, answer the question, what, who, why, and how? As simple as that and as clear as that. Jesus says, love your enemies what love your enemies yes you heard it right christians are called to an absolutely radical behavior to love even the enemy it may be the most revolutionary teaching of any religion or religious leader in human history but it distinguishes christian from non-christian as much or more than anything we do or say that's the what what to love our enemies jesus says love your enemies who your enemies but who are our enemies who is your enemy who is my enemy the brothers and sisters enemies come from the circumstances of life and from the choices of our lives. Circumstances may be beyond our control. It may be that we are assaulted, cheated, abused, hated, disliked. It may be because of the job we hold or the prejudice against us or the war around us and simply from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's circumstances. Wala po tayong magagawa doon dahil nandun na yon. It's just a circumstance. But choices, on the other hand, are within our control. No one can be our enemy unless we choose them to be our enemy. Wala pong makapagsabing, galit ako sa kanya hanggat hindi mo sasabihin may galit ka sa kanya. Someone else may level us as the enemy. But no one can be our enemy without our consent and decision. It is our choice. Some of us have many enemies because we choose so many for the enemy list. Para sa atin, yon ang may control tayo. Our enemies include anyone who disagrees with us politically, religiously, and personally. Enemy is anyone who does not and who, don't, uh, who we don't like. Those who do, we don't like. Kaya meron tayong choice, pero yon ang choice natin na gawin natin silang enemies. Kagalit. And yes, my dear brothers and sisters, they could be those close to us by blood. Family members, sisters or brothers, relatives, friends, even BFF could be enemies. Alam niyo naman siguro yung BFF. No? Best false friends. No? They are our enemies. Again, Jesus said, love your enemies. But why? 
By why, why should we love our enemies? They are our enemies. We should hate them. Bakit pa natin mamahalin? Of course, ideally, because God wants us to be like Him. God wants us that we would like our, love our enemies so that we are truly to become daughters and sons of the Father. His image and likeness. And because our enemies, just like us, are temples of the Holy Spirit in the second reading. They should be respected, they should be understood, and they should be forgiven. We should love our enemies because there is also persons who are hurting just like us. We should love our enemies because in choosing the highest good for them, even though we have the, received from them the lowest evil comparing with what we have done to them. Our love comes from belonging to the family of God. We refuse to be controlled by the behavior of our enemies. We behave like Jesus, who had forgiven even those guards, even those who uh, whipped him, forgave the, and prayed for those who executed him. They were pounding him and the resurrection and the nails into his hands. But that Jesus even prays for them. Love your enemies. But how? How can we love them? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, we are to love our enemy by blessing and praying for them. We need not to hug them, of course. At first, yes. Hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin na ah, enemy kita. Pwede ba tayong hug muna? Baka mamaya black eye ang abutin mo. No? We can, we can pray for them, we can bless them. If there's an opportunity, we should do some good to them, even as we transform their hurting hearts into our loving hearts. Hindi tayo magpapakontrol doon sa mga hurt natin, sa mga resentment natin. Walain natin yun. Yun lang ang paraan para masabi natin we can love our enemies. Ask God to bless them and show them mercy. Why? Because to share, to shame them is not the way of a Christian. No, in order to find it in our heart to love them, we have to understand and respect them because again, they are also the image and likeness of God and they are temples of the Holy Spirit just like each and every one of us. So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus says, love your enemies. It is the most challenging command of Jesus may be, but it is not impossible to do. If it was impossible, then Jesus would not ask us to do that. It is possible because he himself had done it. He has forgiven those whom they think that are enemies of Jesus. If we exact an eye for an eye, the whole world will be go blind. Wala na pong mga mata tayo at hindi na po tayo makakapanood ng television. Talagang magkabubulungan na lang tayo dahil ang maririnig natin ay boses na lamang. If we exact an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, maraming dentist ang pwede mayayaman. Kasi sila lang ang pwede magpostiso sa atin. So, Jesus asked us to put love into life, to break the spire of violence and the cycle of violence, hatred, and negativity, and putting love into life. Love is the only means to achieve anything negative into a positive reality. My dear brothers and sisters, I suppose you know Nelson Mandela, yung kapitbahay namin dati. No? Nelson Mandela, was uh, spent most of his life in South African prison under the racism of apartheid. In one of the most amazing transformations of the nation's history, he was not only set free, but became the president of South Africa. He became the, the president of South Africa, and the head of states from around the globe came to his inauguration, vying for the front row seats in his inaugural 
uh, presentation. Pero alam nyo kung sinong inimbitahan niya para umupo sa harapan? The prison guards. Loving your enemy in word and in deed. The prison guards, just like Jesus, the executioners. He still bless them. He says, pray for them. The brothers and sisters, you see therefore that Jesus is out to create an army of disciples that took the enemies as he and his father look at them as people to love and to care for. Jesus is out to change you and me, every one of us, so that all the resentment of our hearts will be gone and a forgiving hearts would be with us. Jesus commands us in this verses, along with the working of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. So in this Mass, as we continue with this, let us pray for the strength and courage to love one another and also even to love our enemies. May God bless us all. Please all stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God. Let us dedicate ourselves to mirror the Father's holiness in our daily lives. Let us ask the Lord for the courage to live up to the challenge of the gospel as we say, Hear the prayer of your people, Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, Lord. That nations torn by war and violence may seize their conflicts. Through dialogue and peaceful negotiation, we pray that warring factions among our people may realize that violence begets more violence, while reconciliation asserts peace and hope, we pray that the violent and the oppressors may open their eyes to see that the love of God is an invitation for them to reform their lives, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, Lord. That those who work for the cause of peace may be given strength and perseverance in their difficult mission, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, Lord. For the sick and the suffering who are listening and watching this Mass, that Jesus may bring hope and joy while in their earthly journey, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, Lord that all the sponsors, donors, and cooperators become witnesses of faith, hope, and charity through their generosity, we pray. Hear the prayer of your people, Lord. Lord Jesus, you said that you should be holy as our Heavenly Father is holy. Teach us always to do the Father's will that we may offer him a fitting sacrifice now and forever. Amen.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with your servants, that is your Jew, we humbly ask you that what we offer to honor your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held, it, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Rommel, our Bishop, all the bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Sisters and brothers, behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The blood and blood of Christ bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease Realize that we are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in his sufferings for the salvation of the world. Who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata. O God, who set the earth on its firm foundation, spare those who are fearful and show favor to those who implore you, so that with all the dangers of earthquakes and typhoons, wars and natural calamities entirely gone, 
we may continue to experience your mercy and serve you in thankfulness, safe under your protection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in the love of Christ.